Hey guys, welcome back to Flatback Effects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can turn any 2D image into a 3D scene. Now the 3D part of this tutorial comes from Tutorials View Plus, and this is where I got the idea for the 3D part of this tutorial. So if you wanna learn more about this whole process, then go check out their video. I'll have a link in the description below. Now they give you a link to a free website where you can actually upload your image and turn it into a depth map. Now this is the image here that I've sourced for my scene and all I need to do is just drag and drop it into the image to 3D section. So I'm just gonna drag this straight into this part. I'm gonna make sure that the occlusion is also included and just hit submit. And then it gives you a little live preview of what it's going to look like. And then you can just simply click download and then download that file. And now you're ready to import that into After Effects. Over in After Effects, I can now drag that file into my After Effects project. Then I can go ahead and create a new composition. This one, we're just going to, you can set up the dimensions however you like. And then I'm just gonna grab this model and drag it into that composition. And it's gonna ask you to change a few settings. Now, the first thing is I'm just gonna make this the comp size and you'll need to flip on the Z axis and then that's it. Now we can go ahead and create a new camera. This one I'm gonna set to be 35 millimeter and then hit okay. And now if I cycle through my different camera tools, I can now zoom into my composition here. And now you can see that you kind of have this 3D effect going on here. And then I'm just gonna create some keyframes here to animate my camera. So we kind of end up with something like this. You may need to adjust your camera to sort of zoom in a little bit here, but then you kind of get that little bit of movement. Now, if you're getting these little jagged edges here, you can also just adjust your camera down to get more of that perspective. In their tutorial, they show you how to add 3D lights and also you might need to flip the image as well. Again, they have a much more detailed tutorial. You can go and watch all of that to learn more about how to do that. But what we're gonna focus on is how to add some elements into this. But I wanna add some elements in, in like I did my original where I had a title and some clouds in the foreground. So what I did was I created a new composition here and all I did here was just basically created a solid fill, just kind of drew out a box here. It can be whatever color that you like. And then just add a bit of text over the top. Now the exact settings that I'm using are over here on the side of screen if you want to match exactly what I'm doing, but it doesn't really matter. You can make your own text box however you like. And then I also just hit T on my keyboard, scaled down the opacity slightly on these. And that made them very slightly transparent so that we could see more of the background. And then with that scene, what I'm going to do is just drag that title in over the top. We can scale this down slightly, but what we need to do is we need to make it 3D. Now, as soon as you do that, it's most likely gonna disappear. And that's because you need to reposition it here in three dimensional space. So as you move it back, this is the other cool thing about these models. It basically interacts with whatever that 3D image that you have there. If you scale this down, you can kind of position it here in three dimensional space you know, to have it sort of sticking however far off that image you want. So if you want it, you know, right, if you want to position well away from that model, then just move it forward. Otherwise you can move it back. And as you move it back, it starts to interact with the mountains. So you could get a really interesting sort of look here if you want to make it interact with that three dimensional model. Otherwise, just kind of position it however you like in 3D space. Now, if you're new to After Effects and you wanna learn more about all of these different animation techniques, especially stroke lines and all of those sort of things, then definitely check out my Animation Master course. It'll take you from an absolute beginner, never having used After Effects before, 
right through to creating some really cool map animations, graphics, and then right into fully animated scenes. It comes with a full 14 day money back guarantee. I've had hundreds of students go through this course and so many of them have had fantastic results. I have a lot of testimonials, which will also be on that link in the description below. You can read all of their testimonials. So if you're interested in learning more about animation or you're just interested in learning how to use After Effects more effectively, then definitely check out my Animation Master course below. Now, the other thing that I also did was add in some clouds. So I've got some cloud PNG layers here and what I can do is just also add them in and if I make them three dimensional, I can also move them forward in the three dimensional space. I can scale them down and then just kind of reposition them here in the foreground. And again, you might need to adjust them. So if you want more parallax, just sort of move them closer to your camera and then sort of shift this across. And you can also hit T and just kind of scale these down to like say 40% or something. That's just gonna help match it into that scene. Just kind of reposition this however you like. I added a couple of cloud layers in, but you can add whatever you like. Just kind of adds that really sort of extra layer of realism to the scene. And I also animated these little lines which sort of went down the back of the mountain here. So what I can do with my pen tool, making sure I've got nothing selected, can add a bit of a stroke on this one. And then I just kind of followed the contour of this mountain edge down something like that. Just brought it underneath these layers. And what I can do with this is also make it 3D. You'll also have to position this layer in 3D space. But what you'll notice with this one is if you position it here, just also going to use my pan behind, which is Y on the keyboard, just to position this anchor point. Scale this down. What you'll notice is as you move it back, it starts to interact with that model. So you can kind of use this to make it look like you know, it's sort of interacting with the landscape. So we can make it look like the line sort of going down behind this little bit. and then sort of reappears over the top and then sort of moves down this way into our scene, something like that. And what we can do to this, if we come down to the stroke settings under contents, we can also add a little bit of dashes. Click that twice and you can kind of create a bit of a gap here Add a little bit more of a gap, maybe less. And the other thing that I also added was a bit of a taper. So I can start So it makes it look like the line is sort of coming from the distance and then moving towards the camera. And you can also add a little bit of a trims path. And that is if you wanna animate that line. So if you wanna animate that line on, you can scale this back and then sort of animate this on something like that. And it just kind of creates an interesting sort of animation here in the background. So this is a really cool effect. And the thing I love about it is that because it's a 3D sort of model, you can have your line sort of interacting and really make it, you know, fit into the scene a lot better 
than if this was just a still image. So you can really create some awesome looking scenes. If you wanna learn more about this technique, then definitely check out their full tutorial down in the description. And that goes into how you can also add 3D lights into the scene, which is really cool. And also about how to flip your image and things like that. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you picked up a few tips and tricks. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.